Dante goes too far. Dustern is a young deer who lives in New Hampshire, USA. He lives a nice, quiet life and has friends from his homeland and even around the world. He even runs his own YouTube channel, to which he has nicknamed himself the NPRRE2. NPRR, for those uninitiated, stands for North Pole Railroad. He was having a nice, peaceful life, but one day he felt bored out of his mind. <sighs> I'm so bored. If only something exciting would happen for me. But then it did. As he was taking a little walk, he felt his phone buzzing, alerting him to take it out of his pocket. He looked and saw it was a Google chat message from his friend from England, Daniel Wells. Oh, it's Daniel. I wonder what he wants. Hey, E2 old buddy. I just wanted to let you know that I feel like you need a change of scenery, and I feel that you need a vacation from work, so I figured out just the thing. Huh? Daniel wants to offer me a holiday to myself. To where, Daniel? <gasps> I'm invited to visit Furry Railways for a few months? Daniel, I am so there. Oh, yeah! I'm gonna visit Furry Railways in England! This has got to be the best thing that's happened to me since Daniel made me a voice actor in his channel! <sighs> right then. I guess I better start making arrangements. So Dust's turn did. It took a few days, but soon all was ready. He took a cruise to England on a ship across the North Atlantic. Soon he arrived at Southampton. Once off the ship, he looked around. So, this is England. Yep, I think I'm gonna like it here. Duster? Good lord, Daniel! Oh, it is so good to finally meet you in person! <laughs> you too, Dustin, you too. How'd you know I was arriving at Southampton? Well, I guess since that you lived in New Hampshire, you're not far from New York. So I took a lucky guess and figured that you were going to cross the North Atlantic. Well, you made a very lucky guess. Come on, let's get you to Ferry Railways. Are we going by car? Nope, we're going by train pulled by a locomotive that you will recognize. Dustern was confused, but once they reached the station, he beamed when he saw a familiar big red engine with a vixen face. No way! The famous Duchess of Athol! The one and only! You must be another one of Daniel's friends from America. Um, Dustern. Isn't it? Yep, that's me. Welcome to England. It's a nice, peaceful country. <laughs> well, when criminals aren't causing too much trouble, of course. I can imagine so. Are you going to take me to Furry Railways? I sure am. This is Dale's private train. I can imagine. I'm surprised you brought your private engine to pick me up, Daniel. Are you kidding? I couldn't leave her behind if I wanted to. Now come on, Furry Railways awaits. You'll love the Furry Kingdoms, Dustern. It's very peaceful there. DOA, after having to go through so much stress at home, that's just what I want. Wasting no time, Dustern got onto the train with Daniel, and the big red engine set off on her journey. It was a long journey, but they arrived that afternoon. Here we are, Dustin. Welcome to Furry Railways. Whoa. It's better than when I see it on YouTube. 
Daniel, I can honestly say this will be a trip I shall not forget. <laughs> How good to hear it. Now, you will go to your hotel room and get settled in. Once you've sorted your stuff out, you're more than welcome to explore the railway, free of charge. Really? Wow, thanks. So Dust Stern went to the hotel to sort his things. Once he was done, he decided to spend the afternoon exploring the rail yard. Golly, it's just as Daniel and I pictured it. Hey there! Whoa! Dust Stern looked back and saw a big black tank engine. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> That's alright. I didn't see or hear you coming and... <gasps> well, shut my mouth! You're Max the L E R Thompson L1! That's me, and judging by your shirt, you're Dustin, aka the MPRRE2. That is me. How did you know that? Our manager Daniel showed us your furry railway tale series on a big screen. We think it's brilliant how you make videos of us in Train Simulator. Oh, why thank you, Max. Also, when I made episode 3, that was a sign I had heard about how you came up with the idea to turn an old oil refinery into an animal hospital. Oh yes, my animal care center. I will admit, I am proud to have a hospital named in my honor. But, uh, I always make sure to not let it go to my smoke box. That makes me want to ask you, Max. How do you know the difference between right and wrong? You're damn right I do. I'm an engine with an open heart, and is always willing to show kindness. Just like I did for Jasiri and Jonja. Oh, yes. I remember that experience. It was back when Ernest was being judgmental to those two hyenas, only to end up crashing into meat bands. But in the end, he learned his lesson and made things right after he saved you and the hyenas from being a runaway after you lost the main connector to your brakes. Yeah, that runaway was a bit uh, scary for me. Uh, I didn't even feel the main connector fall off me. But thanks to a redeemed Ernest, I'm still in one piece. Just be careful when you mention any of this to Ernest. He hates being reminded of when he was judgmental towards Jasiri and Janja, especially his accident with the meat bands. He admits he deserved it, but he just doesn't like to be reminded of it. I understand, Max, and don't worry. I can see Ernest has learned from his mistakes. Indeed. But, unfortunately, that isn't stopping Dante from picking on him. You as don't soon as he said that, do, the two Dante. suddenly That's heard Daniel's Vicious fault. arguing. They looked what over to see the a black GWR Panger arguing with a green class O8. You know Daniel wouldn't do that, Dante. He made it very clear that he would never scrap us. Well, he should. Especially you, Mr. Judgmental Engine who crashed into a... Don't you dare talk about Jasiri and Georgia like that. I'll be off with you, you oversized green bogey. Oh, green bogey, am I? Yeah, because all you can't accept that this is a large heritage railway where both steam and diesel engines are welcome. Shut your mouth, you black lunchbox! Who are you calling a black lunchbox, you stupid git? I'm calling you a black lunchbox because you- Dante, that's enough! <sighs> now come on, we have work to do. This isn't over, over Protective Ernie. How dare he say that about Jasiri and Georgia? HOW DARE HE?! Calm down, Ernest. Grumbling about it would do no good. <sighs> right. Sorry about the loud argument, Max. I just can't stand Dante sometimes. I know, Ernest. Nor me and the other engines can stand him. Oh, oh. Hello there. Who might you be? My name's Dustin, also known as the NPRRE2. Well, no nice to meet you. I'm Ernest the Pannier Tank. My friends and I have heard about you from Daniel. We love how you made us in trains a new era. It makes us look like computer animations. That's pretty much the idea. You likely noticed that I know about your experience with the hyenas. Ernest blushed with embarrassment, remembering how he had been judgmental to Jasiri and Janja, and being overprotective of Bambi around them. 
He also remembered his accident with the meat bands, which led to his punishment before he saved Max and the hyenas from a runaway. He knew his judgmental behavior was what led to the accident, but he wished everyone would just forget it. You are indeed correct. Uh, I was a bit judgmental to them. Even now, I still feel so silly about it. Well, you did learn your lesson afterwards and saved me and the hyenas. And that is what makes you a good engine. Agreed. You made a mistake. You vowed to never make it again. True. Pardon my loud voice earlier. I just didn't like what Dante said about Jasiri and Jonja. I also hate it when he keeps reminding me of my accident with the meat violence. I know I may have deserved it, but it just gets so frustrating after a while. I heard about Dante. Daniel told me he's nothing but a bully on free railways. You would be correct. He's nothing but trouble. And it's all because he doesn't like working with steam engines. He knows diesels are obsolete now too, but he still thinks diesels are superior to steam engines. And he still thinks steam engines should all be scrapped, not preserved, or even in museums. In all honesty, I think Dante had better accept steam engines soon. Because I, as far as I can tell, he's on his final warning. What makes you say that? I heard or heard Daniel saying that he was now getting fed up with Dante's bad behavior. I think his patience is starting to thin on Don. Well, considering how horrid Dante is to you and the other engines, I don't blame him. The following day, Dustern was spending the day exploring the stations. As he explored, a big blue engine pulled in. Hello, sir. Well, hello there. You must be Princess Mary Louise. That's me. But you can just call me Mary. It's much easier that way. Sure thing, Marie. I'm Dustin, another one of Daniel's friends from America. Nice to meet you, Dustin. What brings you all this way to England? Daniel invited me to visit his railway. I saw his videos on YouTube and I was fascinated with his railway. The fact that it's a place where engines, animals, and people all live together in peace. Indeed. We have a strict no prodigious rule. That's good. And for what I can see, Marie, you are... A bully and a liar! Dustern turned to see Dante glaring at Princess Marie Louise. Dustern then remembered from one of Daniel's YouTube videos that Dante hated LMS Express engines, thinking that they were all rude and boastful bullies. Dustern glared at Dante, as he was not going to stand for this. Leave Marie alone, Dante. She's not a bully. Even if she was, she would have done bad things by now. But she hasn't. So stop accusing her of something she's not. She hasn't done anything bad yet, true, but that's only because she's waiting for the right time to strike. When Daniel finally realizes how stupid he was to buy that lying blue sausage, it'll be off to the scrap heap for her and- Dante, that's enough! Atlas, the red J-94, puffed up with a local train, looking very cross. Listen, Dante, we are all getting sick and tired of your nonsense. It's starting to get annoying. In fact, even Daniel's getting tired of it too. If you don't stop these false accusations, name calling and bowling, Daniel will likely send you away for good. But Dante wasn't convinced. That's a lie. You're only saying that to try and scare me. Well, it's not gonna work. So stop being like the blue sausage who tells nothing but whoppers. Whoppers? I think you'll find that I am an honest engine and that it's you who tells whoppers here, you ignorant green bug. OH SHUT UP, YOU OVERSIZED RASPBERRY! Dante stormed away angrily, still not convinced that he'll be sent away. Atlas ignored Dante's rude remark and looked at Dustern and Princess Marie Louise. <sighs> Sorry about Dante, Dustern. He's been more horrible than ever. Uh, it's okay. It's not your fault, Atlas. But from what you just said, it seems Daniel is truly about to lose patience with that green diesel. I can sense that a really big scolding will come. 
Well, with the way Dante keeps behaving, I wouldn't be surprised. Soon, everyone would see that they were right. As the days wore on, Dante continued with his vulgar attitude. He went on saying engines like him were proper engines, called everyone horrid names, and tried telling lies to get the steam engine sent away. But his lies didn't work. The fact that Dante's whoppers weren't convincing Daniel to send the steam engines away for scrap was making him crosser and crosser. He complained to himself in a siding. God damn it all! I'm not getting anywhere with this! Why won't Daniel just open his eyes and see that engines like me are proper engines? What's worse is that he won't listen to me when I tell him that those LMS Expressers are bullies and liars! <sighs> if Daniel won't get rid of these kettles, then I'll just have to do it myself. This calls for extreme measures. Dante began coming up with a truly devious plan. He might have stayed on the railway if he hadn't. Later, Dustern was talking to Duchess of Athol, who was very cross. I know I'm a kind engine, Dustern, but Dante's attitude is really starting to get on my nerves. I don't blame you, Athol. When I last saw Daniel, I could tell he was starting to reach his breaking point with Dante. I have a feeling Dante is on his last chance. Well, can you blame him? Dante's been told many times to improve his attitude, but he always refuses to do so. Well, hopefully things can't get any worse. But as soon as he said that, they heard what sounded like trucks running freely down the line. The two looked and gasped in horror to see some oil tankers heading straight for Duchess of Athol. Oh no! Help! Oh crap! Oh, that was close. Soon, the mess was cleared up. Sir Francis Drake was there to help. Gosh, this gives me bad memories of that incident in the forest. Are you sure you're okay, Athel? Oh yeah, <laughs> no serious damage. But Dustern was the one who saved me when he switched the points. Thanks for saving me, Dustern. Oh, it was nothing. I just saw there was a set of points nearby. I decided to act fast. But there's one thing that puzzles me. Why did those oil trucks come thundering down the track without an engine? You can find out by asking this guy! Max rolled in with an angry look and pushing a shock to Dante in front of him. Dante here was getting fed up over the fact that Daniel refused to send us steam engines away and thought it was a good idea to get rid of us himself. So he bumped some oil trucks in the hopes of destroying Duchess of Athol, but I happened to be nearby and caught him just after he bumped the trucks. What? Dante, is this true? That's false. I didn't bump those trucks. This stupid black engine is lying to you. You're lying right now, fatty. Fatty? How am I fat? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You just are. That wasn't the only thing he did. Take a look at what happened to poor Princess Marie Louise. Louis pulled in with a damaged Princess Marie Louise who was crying. Marie! What happened to you? She derailed herself and she's trying to blame me for bumping off the tracks. Don't you lie to us, you lying heap of scrap! You actually did bump her off the tracks to try and get her beyond repair and have her sent for scrap. You even threatened to hurt her more if she told anyone you did. I know, because I saw the whole thing while you weren't looking. That's another lie! It's all on CCTV footage. Everyone will know when they see it. It's fake! It's not freaking fake, you damn moron! You know what? I'm gonna ask Dante's driver if what Max and Louis say is true. Damn it, kid, get lost. They're trying to fr Don't you call me again and tell me to get lost, you oversized shoebox on wheels! I am already irritated by how you've been treating 
Daniel's engines. Now, I'm going to ask your driver, tell me the truth, and nothing but the truth. If you try to stop me, I'll throw a huge chunk of coal into your eye. Driver, I need you to be up front. Did Dante really do all the things that Max and Louis just told us? Yes. Yes, he did. I tried to convince him to stop, but he just ignored me and went along with it. All because he doesn't want to be around steam engines. The stern was livid. Dante, you horrid green goblin! I knew it from the start that you would possibly try to attempt something as horrible as this because of your hatred for steam engines! Everyone here has tolerated you many times before, but this time you've gone too far! Way too far! What you did is illegal, you know! Alright, fine, I admit it! Yes, I did do all this, so what if I did? Brainless idiots like Daniel don't see the reliability in proper engines like me. It just refers to these useless relics and those steam-loving, traitorous diesels. Anyway, while you all know what I've done, Daniel does it and he never will. Dante! Uh. Everyone, including Dante, jumped to see Daniel standing nearby. He had heard everything, and he was furious! I shall talk to you later. Louis, take Marie to the works and Sir Francis Drake, take the tankers away, but be careful if they start leaking. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Unluckily for Dante, Daniel did see the footage, and I'm sorry to say, his patience with Dante had truly snapped. He spoke severely to Dante at the station, while the engines and Dust Stern glared at the Green Class 08. Do you have any idea of the damage you caused today? I was only trying to make the railway better, sir. Better? Your behavior only causes trouble. I don't like the way you behave, and I don't like the way you treat my engines. I just want this railway to be rid of all steam engines and run by diesels like me to make it a proper railway. Is that too much to ask? Dante, there are a few reasons why Daniel keeps steam engines here. One is because he loves steam engines, and two is because the furry railways is a heritage railway. A heritage railway where steamies and diesels treat each other as equals and not to try and destroy each other. Oh, come on! What I did might have been a tad bit messed up, but I wanted to free this railway of the true bullies! A tad bit messed up? A tad bit messed up? This is beyond messed up! <sighs> I agree. Dante, I simply cannot abide by having an engine like you around here anymore. But sir, I- Shut up! I don't want to hear your excuses. I am tired of your nonsense. You have been nothing but a nightmare since you came here. I cannot take it anymore. Dante, I am no longer going to keep you on my railway. I am sending you away to work at Southampton Docks, and that's where you'll stay for the rest of your life. What? You can't do this to me! I've been putting a lot of hard effort into this useless railway to improve it! Silence! I've had enough of your excuses, and so have my engines. What Daniel's saying right now is true, Dante. We all want you gone for good. What? Dante, if it isn't obvious enough, we're kicking you off furry railways because of your constant behavior of being rude to us all the time. We have had enough of your nonsense, so we're letting you go. Exactly, Dante. You have been bullying and harassing us ever since you came here, and we are fed up with it. You don't deserve to be on this railway, so that's why we're kicking you out. What the hell? You're sending me away because of that? It's not my fault you're all a bunch of useless kettles. I'm the only one here who's a proper engine, unlike you bastards. Shut up. We're all sick of you constantly being rude to us and always complaining. So all we want now is for you to get off our bloody railway and leave. 
Hell no! You're all out of date, unlike me, and those diesels who are friends with you are nothing but traitors to all other diesels! I have the right to treat you the way I do! Steam engines are obsolete, and it's easier to scrap you and not keep maintaining you! We are much more manageable compared to you useless kettles, but this is besides the bloody point! I shouldn't be getting kicked off this railway! If anything, it's you lot who should be the ones to leave! Because you're all out of date and pathetic! That's stupidly ironic! Especially since that's coming from you. What the hell are you even on about? Do you remember when me and Olivia stopped you from dognapping? And when Thomas stood up against you for bullying Princess Marie Louise? Daniel scolded you many times. But no matter how many times he scolds you, you refuse to change! And another thing. Steam engines may be obsolete these days, but you diesels are no better. Plus, your class is in the same boat as many other engines. Uh, what are you talking about? Dante, it's no use trying to hide the facts. We all know that some of your siblings have also been withdrawn from service and then got for scrap. But we never provoked you about it once. Not once. And yet, here you are acting like you're some hotshot who thinks you're better than us. Aye, that behavior is becoming nothing but a nuisance to us. This is the reason why all of us, including Daniel, all want you to leave. We gave you many chances to change, but you never even try. So we decided that it's time that we got rid of you once and for all. And once you're gone, Daniel is going to find a new shunter to take your place. Whether it will be steam or diesel, it's unknown for new. But it will hopefully be one who focuses on doing their job and not bullying us. This isn't fair! I want my own mother off trying to improve this railway! Daniel, please, you can't do this to me! I'm sorry, Dante, but your behavior has finally crossed the line. My engines and I have already agreed to this decision, and it's no use trying to argue anymore about it. I will not have rudeness and bullying on my railway. But! No but! You had many chances to improve your attitude, but you never do. Now get off my railway! I don't want to see you on your bullying attitude ever again! But sir! I'm sorry Dante, but after how you've been treating my engine since you got here, I'm not taking any more chances of you trying to sabotage my railway. Now leave! Dante gritted his teeth in full rage, but he rolled away without another word. And don't come back ever again, you heap of scrap! Aye, bugger off, and dinner come back! Everyone glared at him until he was finally out of sight. <sighs> I do feel a little bit of sympathy for him, knowing that Diesels are in the same boat as steam engines now. Do you think he'll ever change, Daniel? Uh, I can't really say. Though given what he had done and how he had treated my engines, it might be a little too late. Dustern silently agreed. While he knew Dante was a horrid engine, he silently wished him the best in his new role at Southampton Docks all the same.